Welcome to our tutorial about view manipulation. I've just created a new part document, and in order to show you how to manipulate solids in the graphic area, I'm going to need to create a solid, so let's begin by doing that. Let's right click on the top plane and insert a sketch. Activate the rectangle tool. My dimensions are going to be about 50 by 50. And let's accept our work and exit the sketch. Activate the extruded boss command. And let's make a 50 millimeter extrusion. The first view tool is pan. This is how I grab and move a solid in the graphic area. Click again to deactivate the tool. Now let's talk about zooming. I can use the middle mouse button or my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. While you're rolling your wheel, make sure your cursor remains on the area into which you want to zoom, otherwise your model will go off the screen, so that's the key to using that zoom function. If you hold down the control button and the middle mouse button or wheel at the same time, you activate the pan tool. This of course lets you move your solid around the screen. When you hold down the middle button, you can rotate the solid. If I make a selection with the middle button or wheel, I can rotate the solid around that edge. Same thing if I select a vertex, I can rotate the solid around that vertex. If I select a planar face with the middle mouse button or wheel, I'm also able to rotate the solid around that face. Let's look at the next tool on the hang up bar. Zoom to fit. This zooms the model to fit in your available screen space. F is your keyboard shortcut for that command. Next is zoom to area and you select that in the graphic area. The telescope icon is previous view. By the way, if you don't see the tools I'm talking about, you can open the customize command manager, go to commands, and select the view category. Let's drag on the zoom in and out commands. Okay, let's cancel out of this window. The next tool is Section View. And this tool lets you observe the cavities inside your model. Let's cancel inside the Property Manager to exit. The next tool is how we select a view orientation. SolidWorks gives us a big variety of preset views, top view, isometric, trimetric, dimetric, and so on. Let's take an isometric view. And here's a top view. Clicking on Previous View will now restore us to isometric. The next tool is where we choose a display style. Here we can select Hidden, Shaded with Edges, Shaded, Hidden Lines Removed, Hidden Lines Visible, and Wireframe. Each display style comes in handy at different times and in different environments, and we'll learn more about this later on. By far, the most common display style is shaded with edges. This displays a shaded view of your model with its edges visible. The next tool lets us hide and show items. Here we can toggle on and off such entities as planes, axes, temporary axes, origins, and so on. The last button controls view settings. Our three options are real view graphics, shadows in shaded mode, and perspective. Whether you have the real view graphics option available depends upon your graphics card. Let's take a perspective view. Another way to access view manipulation tools is via a right click contextual menu. Here we see zoom to fit, zoom to area, zoom in and out, rotate view, pan, and so on. Let's activate the view orientation palette. Here we can switch between views and create our own custom views. Now if I want to select entities in my view, let's say for example, this face, I simply click on it. Or this vertex. However, what happens if I want to select something that I can't see from my current point of observation? What I do is right-click and choose Select Other. 
This lets me cycle through the entities that aren't visible in my current view. Another way to access the view manipulation tools is via the view menu. Select view and scroll down to display. The submenu offers a number of view tools, wireframe, hidden lines visible, and so on, modify. Here are zoom tools, zoom to fit, zoom to area, and so on. And this concludes our lesson about view manipulation.